All right, I just started the recording. Yeah, just be a minute or so. I'm looking for something to talk about. Enemies here. Barriers unstable. Oh, you are on fifty. My barriers are Impact. Barrier activated. Can't see. <laughs> yeah, pretty good so far. Some instances where I'd say maybe just shoot some more left clicks when nobody's needing healing. Just spam shield, spam in there, do some damage. Just to get you your ult faster and whatnot. Um, yeah, so, I, you know, I, I was playing on Xbox, that's where I, I like to play comp on Xbox, honestly, just because it's easier to aim for me, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm literally playing, like, on a small screen, 30 frames per second, so that's yeah. mostly why I play, don't play DPS, because, yeah, um, but I was playing on my roommate's Xbox, and I literally won every single game for my thing, and I literally got placed at bronze, Dude. I was so mad. <laughs> yeah, placements in, in general... Placements are based off of last season's played, so it, it really realistically can only ever place you a couple hundred SR above where you no. ended. Oh. So make sure we're sticking with our team there. We just, we, you know, we had a very pretty good hold on choke, but then we, we kind of backed off the point on our own. Make sure that we are sticking with our team as when we're running away from them and to point on our own. We can get killed super easily by enemies, and then we can't help our team out at all. You're fully here. Have you considered a different line of work? Okay, pretty good immortality feel. Alright, so, well, you know, I'm just at the moment accumulating some things we'll talk about after the game. I'm on fire! Team up for special yeah. Be, Make sure you're being a little bit the careful. Forest. Yeah, make sure you're being a little bit careful about standing still, as that almost got us killed there when, when Soldier and Ana were shooting at us, so. Not something we're gonna want to do a lot of the time, just, so just make sure we're moving around using AD strafing, just going back and forth. Alright, so we honestly did pretty good there. I mean, I think that that was it. We were running the <laughs> the meta composition for this map, so that didn't wasn't really a fair uh, a fair play on the enemy team. But in any case, here I'm going to stream my screen if you want to take a look. Um, okay, I'm you, gonna leave this game real quick. Yeah, don't don't get into a queue just yet. I mean, I'll be the next one will be fast enough. Um, so be, and then while while you're queuing up here, what what, what were you queuing for? Are you queuing for everything or queuing for support? I queued for support. All right, sounds good. So, um, just getting over to Baptiste. So, a couple different things. No mainly two different mind. ones. Um, honestly, a lot of the other things just look good for now. But we'll see more as we come along. So, first off, 
just general crosshair placement. So we were, we were shooting at a decently good pacing. There were some times where maybe we could have been shooting where we weren't. Just like, for example, the very beginning of the game when the enemy just like came into choke and no one needed healing, we just kind of stood there. So make sure that when there's nothing else to do, right, like there's no one to heal, that we're just shooting, getting out spam shots to do I damage, and then therefore move. getting ult charge and kills and, and value, right, where sometimes instead of shooting or healing, we would just kind of be sitting around. So that gets a little bit into like action per minute and actions per minute is really just make sure we're doing things as often as possible um not just sitting around doing nothing right if you compare a grandmaster player to a bronze player right a grandmaster player is going to be for the most part with you know with the ex with mistakes of course but the grandmaster player is going to be efficient with like every single second of their time right they're gonna be constantly doing something so we're shooting we're shooting we're healing we're you know we're shifting we're lamping right we're doing stuff constantly whereas with you know bronze player might be going shoot heal shoot heal pause for five seconds right and then we're back to shoot heal and then we're looking at the scenery right um, or at least you know new bronze players right we're gonna be doing something like that where it's just a lot less efficient so i'm not saying that's that that's just an extreme example of what it might look like for you so um you just want to make sure we're doing things you know fast and and make sure we're doing them at all right instead of sitting around um particularly just making sure we're spamming out shots um now moving on so this gets into crosshair placement and making sure we're placing our crosshair at the best place possible to hit the easiest shots so particularly when we are aiming for headshots right on baptiste is a character uh, is a character who can hit headshots which do a lot more damage than body shots we want to make sure we're hitting headshots rather than body shots because they're going to be doing like two times more damage um in this case i think it might even be like three times more damage right just because we can two shot someone versus three shot someone or something of that sort right um we just yeah. want to be making sure that we're hitting those headshots so how we can do that easily is just make sure we're aiming at head level right this means that we have less adjustment to hit headshots right when we're aiming at enemies um when we have to adjust super far this just becomes a very hard shot to hit rather than if we're just going side to side less adjustment means it's an easier shot to hit so when we have to adjust less of a distance it's easier to hit um just notice how like let's say we're spamming the shield spamming down a corridor just spamming into people by default if we're aiming here just our default shots are gonna be body level whereas if we're aiming up a little bit more we're doing the same exact thing aiming down a corridor aiming into shields aiming at people normally our default level now becomes just head level just because we're already aiming here so um just make sure we're walking around leaving head level it's gonna make, mean easier shots for you right second step to this is just aiming where we know people are gonna be right we know somebody's top left we're pre-aiming head level they're gonna come back right so that just allows us to hit shots very easily on them because we're already aiming there very little adjustment we know their top left we're gonna pre-aim at their head level as we turn the corner right there we go these guys are on a little bit of a slope so the same way on a tour we'd look down and on a tank we'd look up on a here we're gonna look a little bit down on these guys so when we turn the corner we're pretty much already aiming at them right now, when it comes to right clicks, and I, uh, honestly, this one I think we may have been doing is just we want to aim, when we were trying to heal people, we want to aim at their feet. That way, if, if it, we miss it and go sailing past them, we still hit the ground and it can splash heal them. Whereas if we're aiming here, it's just going to go sailing past them. Right. Um, finally, one last thing was just how to tell whether or not you've won or lost a fight. So um, this is very important, of course, because you're going to be making different decisions when you're winning or losing. So um, ma mainly most of this comes down to watching kill feed, which is the top right corner of your screen, right? When we are up one to two people, that is an advantage, right? We can play more aggressively because they have less people to shoot at us, less people to do things to us. So therefore, we have the advantage. When we are up two to three people, that is where we have won the fight, right? At that point, don't want to use ultimates, right? This is something that we had done in our game where we were up two to three, or we were up, you know, I think three or four people, and then we ulted, right? This is just overkill. It's not going to make a difference because you already won the fight. So what's the what what purpose does an ultimate serve, right? When we could just use it for the next fight. So when it comes to using ult, make sure we're not using it in one fights. Pay attention to when it's won. Watch kill feed. Other than that, you can play super aggressive when you want to when you when you've won the fight just because you have a ton uh, more players on your team than the enemy does, right? Now this also goes the exact opposite way, right? When you're down one of the two people, that is a disadvantage. Now you didn't lose the fight yet, but you might want to play a little bit more passive because you're lo losing the fight, right? Um, and then besides that, you are also, when you're down two to three people, that is a lost fight, same thing. 
don't use ultimates in a lost fight because that would just be wasting the ultimate. It, you know, you've already lost the fight. Your you ulting isn't going to make a difference for the most part. And then on top of that, we want to look to get out if possible. And if we can't get out, we want to let them kill us. So that's just how to tell whether or not you want to lost the fight. You can go ahead and get into a queue here. Um, and then, yep, we'll just go from there. So in the last game... Yeah, we had, we had a couple tinier things. It was pretty much just a, us rolling them, so I'd like to see a little bit closer of a game, preferably here. Also, do you need to stop streaming in between games here or not? Yeah, my computer sucks. <laughs> yeah, all good. Traveling to Volskaya Industries. Also, on top of that note we talked about earlier, do you still consistently play PS4, Xbox, and PC? Like, or do you play all like a mix between the three? Um, I don't have a PS uh, PS4 anymore. Um, but I play my roommate's Xbox. Okay, and then do you? So again, just same thing. Out of everything I say, that's the most up to you. It's not like that. That's your decision to make. I would say that's also slightly spreading yourself thin again because now you're learning the mechanics between a controller and a and a mouse and keyboard and then on top of that Xbox and PC are just different in their environments mainly stemming from the fact that it's controller to PC so it has different pacings, different metas, different things that are good. So just overall I'd probably recommend um, sticking to one though again if you have another reason to play Xbox, like such as you have, you know, or PC for that matter, right, either or, if you have like a friend who plays on it that you want to play with, or you just have fun playing on it, go ahead and do it, it's up to you. Defend objective A. Protect my turret! They know to improve the card on I require I'm overloading! Barrier is unstable! Get in here. Good immortality field. Immortalities are looking pretty solid. And... Why are they not killing him? Much better. All right. So since this fight's mostly over, I'll start talking now. Um, make sure that we're not overhealing. So overhealing is just any time people on our team are full HP and we're still healing. This is just wasted time where we could be doing something else. So when we are overhealing, we should probably be shooting. We could be looking around for somebody else to heal. We could be reloading. We could be doing literally anything else, right? Besides just wasting time and resources. So just make sure we're paying attention to health bars. That's a part of awareness. And then um, probably say the big one is just shoot when people are full HP. Hey, make sure we're not holding down our shoot button when there, when there's nobody in our line of sight to shoot at. We, we did that a little bit on, on the Reiner a couple of times where he would just go around the corner and we would still keep shooting. So just don't hold down the button if there's nobody there to shoot at. He's giving me old vibes. Oh no! No, I missed. Make sure reloading every time you get the chance. That way you actually have ammo for when you need it. Also, make sure you're not running into Reinhardt's and Reapers, right? Just stay out of their range. I didn't even know the Bastion was sitting right there. <laughs> Can't you see right there? 
No, I couldn't move the thing right there. He's about to old. Yep, I knew okay. it. So first off, you know, they're just, of course, in that situation, we push a little bit far forwards and then we're forced to use our lamp. Um, secondly, this is, that was now, I believe, fight number two to three, where we didn't use our ultimate. Make sure we don't hold on to ults, as when we hold on to them and don't do anything with them, then they just don't get value. So, roughly, when it comes to ults, you use them in any fight that has not been won or lost yet. So, preferably use it at the very beginning of the fight, that way you, it, you can use it before you lose. Um, but there we just never used it, and then therefore, and then therefore it didn't do anything, right? Yeah, I didn't use it because there was only me and one of me and two other people. Yeah, and, and that then in that last yeah. fight, but you could have used it when you had more people. You could have used it in the two fights before that, right? So, you know, I, I'm I'm saying that at the very last bit of that last fight, then yes, that you shouldn't have used it, but any time before that would have been good. That is not a good spot for Bastion. Nope, agreed. But pe people down at that level aren't gonna aren't gonna ha have very good uh, spots. Okay, um, we we seem to be doing this a lot where we run straight at people who have close ranges, right? Reaper and Reinhardt both have very very close range abilities, or sorry, like primary fire. So if we just stay out of their range, we have the advantage against them, right? Whereas we just mm -hmm. we seem to a lot of times be running into them, right? Where we'll just run straight on top of them, make sure that we're not doing that. That way we just stay out of range of them. Oh, make sure you're not standing still, right? This is just going to stop us from getting instantly melted. Other than that, good timing with the ultimate, and then good job throwing in, in the immort immortality. Um, it was just that we stood still, and then therefore we died. Not over yet. Barriers about to break. I don't think that's gonna save him, but um, I guess it kind of did. No, it didn't. Unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't I I guess like whenever I see reapers, I'm usually try to just be like be fucking positive. break. <laughs> yeah, so there in that situation, we could have maybe just backed up further away from him, and then that way we don't die to the old. All right, that's that's something we could have done there. No. All right. <laughs> so um, we'll definitely have a big one that, that I'm noticing that we'll talk about. I think I two main ones that I'm starting to pick up on that we will talk about after the game's done here when we have some more time. <laughs> All better. Good hits. Steady head. We're almost there. I'm overloading. Oh, my God. Hey, you Stay out of my house. Get out of my house. Die. 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 All right, so again, I'm going to be streaming if you want to take a look at my screen. So big one right off the bat that I'm picking up on. So basically that is that we have a hard time swapping between healing and DPS. So I guess here, let me let's start off with just awareness, right? So awareness, it seems like one of the bigger things that I'm noticing at the moment that needs to work on is just we don't seem to be very aware of our surroundings. Particularly this is leading to um, a lot of instances where we'll we'll 
teammates yeah. will just kind of die next to us. So, for example, um, one of the big things I'm noticing is that we have a hard time swapping between our damage and our healing. Whenever we are healing our teammates, let's say, for example, like, or I guess in this example, teammates, enemy team, right? When, when we are healing, we're good, right? We, we can heal them up fine, we have good awareness, but then as soon as we swap the damaging and we start damaging the enemy team, it all of our focus and attention goes on to the enemy team and we completely forget that our team exists, right? And then those are a lot of the times where our team will end up dying is when we completely forget that our team exists and then all of a sudden they need help and we're not there to lamp them or, or give them healing. So we want to kind of get a more fluid um, kind of response to when things are needed. When healing is needed, we heal. When healing is not needed, we damage. Whereas a lot of times here, we, we, we aren't prioritizing healing. Whereas we, we just start shooting and then we just keep shooting. We start shooting, we keep shooting, we just do this for most of the fight, right? A lot of the fights where we start shooting, we just end up shooting for most of it, right? Um, whereas that's not how it's gonna want to be a lot of the time. You wanna have healing as the priority. Healing happens when healing is needed and then damage happens when healing is not needed. Typically, that split is going to be around, on Baptiste, around like a 65 to 35. So you're going to be healing like 65% of the time to 35% of the time damaging. And that's roughly the split. Whereas right now, I'd probably say it's more so for you, like a 50-50. And then on top of that, um, it's also in wrong instances. Like we're prioritizing the, the damage in some instances over the healing. Or at the very least, we're just not paying attention to our team. Like team will be over here here dying and we're just here shooting right where we could be using mortality we could be saving them and this happened in multiple fights so that means that we want to make sure we're paying attention to our team even while we are shooting right it's not wrong to shoot at the enemy team we just while we're shooting at the enemy team we might want to pay attention to our team whether it's looking to the side whether it's sticking with them so we can just be behind them while we're shooting right i notice a lot of times as well just positioning wise we ended up sticking a little bit away from our team um right so we're like instead of if this is like where our whole team's at, we'd be like over here on the side shooting, and then that meant that we were out, they were out of our line of sight. So we want to make sure we're we were like somewhere over here. In general, Baptiste prefers close ranges to people. So why don't we talk about that real quick? Um, in general, Baptiste prefers to be you know as close to his team as possible. Um, this one wasn't very big. It's just a tiny little point, right? Because he has projectiles, right? Projectiles are inherently easier to hit when you're closer to people. Right, um, on top of that he has his immortality, which is another projectile, and it's going to take longer for those to reach people. You can't use your shift on people from this range, and you also can't give your ultimate to them very easily. So in general, Baptiste likes to be closer, um, like more so like at this range if possible. Um, and then the only time you'd ever not do that is if you're taking a high ground, right? For the most part, that was fine. It's just a couple instances where you struggled a little bit with it. But for the most, the, the big thing was just paying attention to where is our team at, paying attention to the danger level and the health bars of our teammates, and then making sure that we're, we're being a little bit more flexible of when we're damaging, when we're healing, right? As we just ended up letting teammates die a lot of the times when we could have saved them. So on to other topics, let me see, what, what else was there? There was, um, I'm trying to think, yeah, we just held on to our ults, you know, we, we held on to it for two to three, five, or actually, sorry, three to four fights there. So we wanna make sure we just not holding on to it, right? When we hold on to it, it doesn't do anything. Um, and then, of course, we don't want to use it when fights are won and lost, but we already discussed that. And then finally, I would say as well, when it comes to old timing, um, use them at the beginning of fights. Um, this is especially going to be helpful with just making sure you don't lose the fight before you get a chance to use your ultimate. Because let's say that you get into the fight and you're looking for an ult, but then you just end up losing the fight before you get to use your ult, well now you're forced to hold on to it, right? Now you don't want, now you won't get a chance to use it. Whereas if we ult at the beginning of the fight, well now we we ha have our impact and can end up winning the fight before we um before we lose it or win it, right? Um, so just use it at the very beginning of fights. On top of that, just inherently ultimates that are used first get more value than ults that are used second. So if we use our ultimate um, before, let's say, for example, the enemy team uses their BAP ultimate, we'll get kills with it, we'll get value, and then therefore their BAP ult will have less people to shoot through it, and then we'll get less value, right? So um, just in general, use your ult at the beginning of fights. Make sure we're not holding on to it. And then besides that, ult abilities honestly look looking pretty solid. I'm trying to think. What else was there? Um, hmm, 
I feel like there was other things, but I'm just forgetting it for now. So you can go ahead and get into a queue. Maybe I'll, I'll sit here and think for an extra minute, though. I'm blanking on things if I had them. The main one was just the awareness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other were awareness thing. So it's also awareness to pay attention to team compositions as team compositions dictates your play style, right? When they are on different characters and different team compositions, they are playing differently, and that means that therefore you need to play differently, right? So for example, just a very easy explanation of this, or d easy example, is Reinhardt and Reaper. When they are on characters that are not Reinhardt and Reaper, we might not have to sit so far away from them. But when they are running Reinhardt and Reaper, we don't want to run up and sit within, like, you know, sw sit within swing range, because Reinhardt can't hit you if you just sit at this range from him, right? Reiner can't physically reach you from here, right? But what mm -hmm. we would do is we would start shooting at Reinhardt and we would shoot at him while we're while we're running at him, right? We would shoot at Reinhardt while we would run at him and we would run into his swing distance. And we did the same thing with Reaper where we would we would we'd start back here and we'd shoot at him and then we would run at him, right? And until we got like right here on top of him and then he just kill us, right? So we want to make sure that on characters that are close range that we're getting away from them and then that's part of awareness and adjusting our play style against different characters. Also just let me know when you get in a game here. Okay. Um, also, make sure we're not standing still. Sometimes notice we stood still a bit and then that got us killed. So, alternatively, also, I'm. Uh, it... I, I do stand still. I try to do it only if I'm behind a shield or something. It's because my aim sucks. Yeah. So... Sometimes I gotta focus. <laughs> So that's definitely understandable, though there are some were some instances where like we weren't behind shields and we stood still, and then that just meant that we got melted or we got very close to getting melted. Um, so alternative. So just to confirm here, uh, I'm streaming. Uh, at least on Discord, it says that you're not watching. Are you watching currently? No, uh, the game is about to start. Okay, sounds good. Let me spectate you then. Let me stop streaming as well. So. Yeah, just when it comes to standing still, just make sure you're going, you know, left, light, right, left, right, as often as possible. You just want to mix it up, make sure you're not a sitting duck, and then that's just going to make it easier for you to stay alive. Um, okay, so I wish I could, here. I wish this was like Reinhardt, where I go like this, and it just slaps everybody. Yeah, so I mean, well, it definitely isn't as effective as Reinhardt, but you can still do that um, if you have a bunch of people sitting around you. Why are you going this way, Ryan? I'm just gonna follow you. Come on, bro, get in front of me. Okay. Nice kill. Slightly delayed with the whip shot. Just pay attention to this health bar, right? Because we could have gone for the whip shot slightly earlier there. Okay, pretty well played. I need to recharge. Teleporter online. No, Reinhardt. Don't do that. Who's over there? Mm. What, 
one other imp so far it's looking like smooth sailing one other improvement point i would mention and this is just again up to you and depends on your priorities is maybe play comp more often as quick play doesn't really offer a big challenge and that means slower improvement as well when you're playing just quick play so Again, that's really up to you and where your priorities lie when you're playing the game, but comp can just lead to faster improvement because you it's a more challenging environment, whereas here, just for example, I think we, we've we won most of the games that we've played. Alright, that might have been my fault there, but we did just sit around a little because I was talking to you, but we did just sit around there, um, not really doing very much, so make sure that we're going in and doing things. Possibly could have ulted there as well before everyone died. Um, is well, there was option. mines on the card, so I had to go around the mines. Mm. Or alternatively, right, if we're if we're ulting at the begin very beginning of a fight, we can ult before mines happen, right, as an example. Where did my Ryan go? Let me patch that up. I missed. Okay. So, when it comes to ability usage, first off, make sure we're using our whip shot off a of cooldown. Now, um, a lot of times I'm only seeing us use it to finish off kills, which definitely isn't bad, but we also want to just be using it to proc our Inspire and make sure our Inspire is going as often as possible. Um, so make sure just in between fights we're using it, when people are, you know, just standing around, we want to just use it off a of cooldown every four seconds, just because it's going to be a really good damage source, it'll get you more Inspire going, and then therefore you'll get a lot more ult charge as well. Um, on top of that, I'd like to see us using our Bash more often, as we only really seem to, at the moment, be using it once in a while, and we don't use it for stuns very often, so we just want to make sure we're using our bash as often as possible. Just really trying to get I'm the most here. of our abilities. No! <laughs> <laughs> nice rally. Oh, I missed. No, I didn't. Yeah, good job backing out of that. Get in front of me, Reinhardt. What you doing, bro? No. Okay, watch your health bar. Make yeah. sure that we're requesting healing when we're low. This will get us healing faster and let our support know where we're at. And then we could also grab health packs as well if we have needed. There, we did go in when we didn't have a full team with us so just make sure that we're paying attention to where our team's at so that we can go in when we have actually have people with us right and then besides that just it was a lot of paying attention to health bar making sure we're not walking in when we're one hp right <laughs> yeah my will made real Hey, very nice. So, overall, the game went pretty smoothly. Um, so, let's see. I don't think that there was really very much we talked about on break. You, you understand, I assume, that just Inspire, like how Inspire works, right? 
Um, whenever I hit, it heals them. Yep, so really that, that also applies to your whip shot as well. So just when it comes to the whip shot, it, it roughly lines up for when Inspire ends. So if you hit a whip shot, it, Inspire starts. R then right as the cooldown comes back, Inspire ends, and you can hit get it again by hitting another whip shot. So if theoretically, if we hit every single whip shot off, like, off of cooldown during the whole game, we could get a really high Inspire uptime and have it constantly going, which will mean more healing for our team, which will also mean that we'll be getting more old charge off of that, more healing, which will lead to more rallies. So overall, and then on top of that, just more damage as well. So just make sure we're making sure we're using it more often. But besides that, it wasn't a ton. So why don't you go ahead and hop into another queue? We'll do like one more game, and then after that, we'll wrap up the session from there, and we'll do. At, at the very end, we'll do go over the main points of the session, do a quick review, and then wrap up. I want to do a tink roll this time. Sounds good. I honestly don't know what I'm better at doing. Like, I, I, I honestly don't know how my play style, like, what character would be best for what I do. Mm -hmm. Like, how I play. Yeah, so, really, when, when it comes down to it you want to that, that's definitely an important question to ask is like which one are you be better at like i think that at, at least if i understood that you're asking like wh what are you yeah. better at tanker support right um yeah so when it comes to deciding that first off i probably say the number one thing you want to pay attention to is just which you have more fun Welcome playing as so it's a video game so of course you want to you don't want to be playing tons and tons of time on characters that you don't find as much fun on um, and then also you'll be more drive to improve, more motivated and have more drive to improve if you're playing a character that you do have fun playing. So, um, overall then, that would be the, the first thing to pay attention to, but then of course the second thing to pay attention to would just be how good are you at the characters, so, um, definitely is something to pay attention to, um, and just... Red Shell... Have you seen that YouTube channel, Red Shell's YouTube yep. channel? Mm -hmm. See, he's mainly a streamer, but I imagine, yeah, he does upload YouTube videos as well. And there's a Lucio in here that says Red Shell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he better carry me then. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go with y'all. Where'd he go? Come here, come here. Very nice. Though probably unnecessary bubble as it didn't do very much, so make sure you know that we're not just plopping it down, but we're using it when we're engaging or going in. Okay, a couple things there. First off, just, um, or I guess first thing would be just make sure that we're leaping in to get on her faster, rather than just kind of slowly walking over to her, right? That we just get you on her faster, make make it so that she can't kill anybody. Jump back over here so I can kill you again. Alright, so while you're ulting, first thing I'd say is make sure you're adding in leaps. This will just get you on top of them faster. This will do extra. I, did, I, I have a bad habit of jumping off the build, of jumping off the map. So <laughs> I was, I just didn't want to, I wanted to push him off the map, but I didn't want to jump yeah. myself into the map. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd still say that definitely just because you're coming off the map doesn't mean that you don't want to jump at all when you're ulting. Um, you just want to get bad, you, know, you want to make sure you're getting used to not going too far. First thing I'd say, secondly, gets in the target. Where are you shooting me? Up there? Come on, Mercy. Okay, so second thing is just target priority. Uh, when we're primaling, maybe the first thing I wouldn't focus is a monkey. Um, firstly, I, I feel like he should have had a jump there because he hadn't used it in a really long time. So, I mean, like, he probably could have leaped out of it and leapt away from you, and then that would have been, you know, get, you wouldn't have gotten him off the map, first off. Second off, just in general, tanks aren't where we want to be focusing on any role. Um, tanks have two to three times the health of other characters. They're going to be there for very hard to kill. They have shields, they have tanking abilities. And then supports and DPS just have higher statistical output. So, um, it's not to say the tank's not an important role. Of course, they do a lot, but... But their job is to create space, whereas DPS do damage and supports do healing. So they're just the imp more important things to kill. And then they're more primaling. We probably go for the supports and DPS over the over the monkey immediately. It would be um, probably just better target priority and target focus. The power of destruction. <laughs> this will protect us. Sniper. You must be cautious. Okay. There, make sure we're keeping our ears open. Widow was shooting from the high ground, and we didn't notice that she was there. So make sure we're listening and and paying attention. That way, we have good audio awareness. Um, and then there as well, just paying attention to our health bar so that we're not we, we can leap out a little bit earlier so that we're not dying. So it's just awareness, awareness is seeming like one of the biggest things uh, throughout all of our gameplay, so that we are able to actually make good decisions. Um, actually, would you be, uh, go ahead and, like, leave this game so we can actually get to the end. I don't want to, um, end up, uh, not being able to go over this stuff at the end here. So I'm going to just be streaming. We'll just do the, uh, go over the main points, then wrap up the session from there. Imagination is the essence of discovery. All right, so, um... Basically, main points, number one point was just awareness, right? Awareness just reached into a lot of different areas of our gameplay, meant that we, you know, when you have poor awareness, you make bad decisions, right? You're not aware of what decisions to make because you don't know what the heck's going on. It's inherently Im impossible to make good decisions when you don't know what's happening. So um, we want to make sure we're being aware of our environments, in, and there's a bunch of different ways that we could be doing this. First off, paying attention to kill feed, right? Kill feed's just going to tell you whether or not you're winning or losing and help you make decisions accordingly. Make sure we're not, um, or basically, just as a quick remind, refresher, it's one to two is an advantage or a disadvantage. Two to three is a one or lost fight. When you've won or lost fights, no ults. In a one fight, get super aggressive. In a lost fight, you want to get out if possible. And if you can't, let them kill you. All right? On top of that, pay attention to team compositions. Team comps dictate play style. Don't run into the Reinhardt and the Reaper. Right? Just pay attention to how you're playing differently. On top of all that, make sure we're paying attention to our health bars. That way we're not um, going in and getting aggressive when we're low HP. Instead, request healing. That'll get you healing faster from your other, from your supports. And look for health packs and make sure you're just not running in when you're low. All right? On top of that, pay attention to your HUD and pay attention to your ultimate so we're not holding on to it for three to four fights. If we're paying attention to the fact that we have our ult up, we can better look to use it right if we know that we have it right on top of that pay attention to where is the enemy team where's my team right for example um just paying attention to what's going on around you paying attention to the health bars of our team and paying and then that will stop uh overhealing and that'll tell us when people are low pay, paying attention to our team so that we know when they need healing and when they're in danger um and then that's i'm trying to think i think that about wraps it up um that is just a lot of things in, in awareness and then yeah. that we just want to make sure we're looking around ourselves more often and then sorry last one was just audio awareness like such so as the in the last game we just had Widowmaker was shooting just from the enemy Widowmaker was shooting just like from right behind us and we didn't hear her right um so we just turn up your volume if needed and other than that we just want to make sure we're paying attention to um the sounds right listen for footsteps listen for gunshots listen for ultimate set abilities and then therefore we'll be able to know that she's there all right, moving on, number two. Let's see, what was number two at? Um, I would probably say the number two comes out at ability, or sorry, ultimate usage, um, as we just held on to it a bunch and then didn't typically get a bunch of value with it. 
Um, you know, we did we did decent with it, just not you know not great. So I probably recommend making sure you know we talked about a bunch of things. Don't use it in one or lost fights. Make sure we're using it at the very beginning of fights, um, so that we don't end up holding on to it. Making sure that we're not holding on to our ultimate um, for multiple fights in a row, but we're using it right in three to four fights when we hold on to an ult. We could probably be getting like two to three ultimates, right? Which is a lot more value than using one ult. Um, top of that, or that, that, that's pretty much it. Monkey ult, make sure we're jumping around a bit more, focus. Um, target priority would just be focusing the better targets, right? Just leaping after them so we can get to them. That's, of course, going to come with practice, but it's just going to be much more efficient than um, just walking up to people. And then finally, or and then moving on, number three. Hmm, probably say this differs between the different characters we are playing. Um, we played Bat Brig and Winston. Uh, we're, they're going to be slightly mixed uh, up here in like the order of the things. So um, on Baptiste, honestly, ability usage looked really solid. On the other two, ability usage need worked. So I'd probably say um, ability usage for the most part, across all everything, was probably the the big thing, right? So on on break, make sure that we are whip shotting as often as possible. Make sure we're bashing more often, um, so we can get our inspire going, right, and do things more often. Monkey, make sure we're not just plopping down our bubble randomly. Um, typically, we're gonna want to use it when we're going in and getting aggressive. And then besides that, a lot of this, I, I I noticed like kind of an overuse of just leaping up in the air, where we would just every single jump would just be this, right? We would just leap straight up. Um, instead, look to just go. At, like you know be a little bit more forwards with it they use it to get over to people and get on top of people um, it just doesn't have to be up all the time um, but besides that that was just number three not a ton I jump of whenever I'm trying to see like who's around me like when I'm trying to if I'm like close to dying or something and I want to see who's around me so I can like know where to jump to for a healer okay and so... also when I jump up I notice healers notice me more um, you can see supports through your, you can see your supports through walls, yeah? Yeah. So what would jumping up do to give you more visibility on them? Like if I'm in front of a, an opponent and then someone's in front of me and I, I don't see like a healer next to me, I'll just jump up so I can like look around and see where my healer's at so I can just jump towards them in their general direction. Okay, so, I mean, first off, that just comes out, I'd probably say just make sure, that it's definitely not something that you would never do, of course, um, there, I'd probably say there are going to be situations, but it's not something you're going to want to do with, like, every single jump, which is what it kind of seemed like, where it was, like, 80% of our jumps was just leaping straight up in the air in our last game, which I'd probably recommend against, um, and then besides that, just pay attention to where your supports are so that you don't have to just be kind of panic looking for them. It's just kind of pay attention to them all along and then that way you don't have to look around for them. So, you know, moving on to some of the other ones, we have positioning and mechanics left. Probably say that mechanics comes in and then positioning honestly was pretty solid. So mechanics comes in and I probably say me just make sure we're aiming at head level, crosshair placement on characters that can hit head shots. Make sure that we are are paying attention to our shots. Um, make sure that I'm trying to trying to think through some of these. Um, target priority. Make sure we're shooting at tank and, and sorry DPS and supports, not at tanks whenever possible. Now that's not to say that we never do, but um, we just we shoot at tanks when they're low out of position or they need healing or sorry now or they're just the only thing to shoot at. And then finally, just on Baptiste, make sure you have a good split between. Um, good split between healing and damage whereas ju just make sure we're not just hard sitting on damage when healing is needed prioritize healing don't overheal as well and then on top of that you want to make sure that it's more of like a 65 35 split rather than like a 50 50 um i probably definitely for say brig, yeah. i have a question i'm sorry yeah, cool. for brig like right where you're standing right there like say that there is somebody coming from behind you is it okay to be like against the wall and just like swing and wait for them to walk through so can you stay, stay like if, I, if i'm sending here like right there yeah turn around if somebody was coming through that way is it okay to just swing like that and wait for them to walk through to you? Like I said, it depends on like the situation. Like if you have your tank in front of you or something? Yeah, like, like I said, it depends on the situation. If you guys are trying to get aggressive and go on to them, then you can run forwards into them. If you're just sitting around and waiting for them to come to you, then, I, you know. Because I feel like I work on my, I work the corners a lot. Like, I work the corners a lot whenever I'm brig. That sounds wrong. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you definitely, definitely can. It just depends on this, upon the situation. When you're doing this, you might want to, you know, get, go for whip shots regularly, make sure we're still, you know, looking around to heal people. 
Um, and then if they're coming to us, then yeah, you can sit here and wait for them. If, if we're going to them, make sure you're pushing in. Right. So Baptiste, I'll probably say that on Baptiste, the mechanics actually goes higher than the other two characters. Brig and Monkey don't have mechanics really, but on Baptiste, it, he did need mechanics. So mechanics would actually go much higher for him and would probably, honestly, on, on our BAP, go up to the number two slot where he it would go right underneath awareness for Baptiste. So moving on, last one was just positioning. Honestly, it wasn't a ton of positioning things that we talked about. Just, you know, for the most part, it actually looked pretty solid. Just make sure that we are. Um, and But then the other thing I'd probably say is that it's not, our positioning wasn't being punished a lot. So it's it, it, you can't really see when you're doing, uh, making mistakes if they're not being punished um, a lot of the time. So get in, if you get into higher lobbies, get into be higher SRs, just go play comp more often then you'll start to see more mistakes coming out. So if we ever did another session, I might recommend um, looking for, like all the games, I think we won the games of them. Like we, I think we won almost every single game we played. Um, if we ever did another session, I might recommend going and trying to get a replay code. That way we you can pick out maybe a game that was a little bit more even because a lot of the games ended up just being rolls and then that doesn't lead to as good of, um, you know, games to go over. So that just might be a recommendation here for if you ever got more coaching. Um, is just look for a closer game and, and get a replay or even just like get, we can do a comp game so you have closer more competitive <laughs> games and then that will also lead to um, more mistakes showing themselves but in any case yep positioning is the last one Baptiste makes sure sticking close to the team and then that was and not running into people who are close range faces um, do you have any questions about anything we've talked about no all right well then let me stop the recording